Australia's consumer affairs ministers will consider a national standard for the free-range egg industry when they meet in June. The term free-range has been contentious in the egg industry, where about 40% of all eggs sold are labelled in this category. But the states, supermarkets and the RSPCA follow a range of different guidelines. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission has also warned that it will continue to prosecute producers where it believes they are misleading the public. Sean Murphy looks at some of the issues. What started as an experiment to improve the soil on this farm at Holbrook in southern New South Wales five years ago is now a thriving business. Although the portable chook sheds are still rotated behind cattle, the focus at Bellevue Farm is now paddock-grown free-range eggs. We started selling the eggs just into Holbrook through the local butcher and the feedback on the quality of the eggs was very strong and, and um, happened very quickly. So we realised that there was a product that we could actually sell and make a business out of, as well as improving our soil through utilising the same animal. We have cattle on adjustment, they run in front of the chooks, and then we move the, move the chooks behind the cattle, um, so that environment for the hens is constantly replaced. It's the fact that we've got this portable system, they've always got access to fresh grass and all the bugs and grubs and insects that come with it, is what I think the public do perceive free range to be. Sam Pincott started with just 50 hens. He now has 6,500 and can't keep up with the demand from restaurants, butchers and small supermarkets. Oh, look, I don't know again what that magic number is, but we're looking to expand again at the, at the moment. And that's purely demand driven, so we just can't keep up at the moment. So we will um, we'll keep, as the demand's there, we'll keep trying to supply it. Farms like this may certainly fit the public perception of what free range is, but with just 5,000 eggs produced a day, it hardly makes a dent in Australia's 12 million plus daily egg consumption. The market trend though is certainly moving away from caged eggs, which now make up just 60% of supply. And it's a trend that's largely being driven by Australia's two major supermarkets. Coles no longer stocks its home brand caged eggs and Woolworths says it won't sell any caged eggs by 2018. This is the reality of free range egg farming on an industrial scale. Pam and Ken Howard have more than 40,000 free range layers on their farm at Gloucester in New South Wales, as well as 60,000 hens in a caged system. The free-range birds have access to the outside for about nine hours a day. The Howards run on a stocking rate of 10,000 birds per hectare, the standard now required by both Coles and Woolworths. They have their areas. We have a few braver ones that move out further, where the crow or a hawk flies over and they panic and come running back to the shed. They don't utilise the area that they've got, that we've had to fence in. That quite a bit of cost. There's a lot of rules and regulations that are being forced upon us that are costing us a lot of money and not helping the birds at all, not helping us. So reducing the 10,000 birds per hectare, reducing that number would really make no difference to the birds? Achieve nothing at all as far as the birds are concerned. It's people's attitude, it's not the birds. The birds are quite happy to be closer together. They, they spread throughout the front area of the range area, but they don't utilise the whole range area. The Howards produce about 80,000 eggs a day and sort and package their caged and free-range eggs separately. I think it's extremely important that there's honesty in the system, both by the farmer right through till the, the consumer actually clicks their eggs and looks at the carton and knows what they're paying their money for is what they're actually getting. 
But according to the consumer magazine Choice, the lack of a national, legally binding definition for free range means Australians can't have faith in the market. In Australia at the moment, free range egg labelling is an absolute farce. Consumers cannot have confidence in those labels. Now we know that 40% of consumers purchase free range eggs, but because there is no national definition of what free range means, people are paying a premium, sometimes 50%, unnecessarily. So what does free range mean? Well, at the moment, free range doesn't mean very much at all. What we do have, though, is a national model code that sets the level for free range eggs at 1,500 hens per hectare and gives you a number of other criteria as well. But I think the critical thing is, is we need national alignment. Every state and territory needs to fall in line behind a common standard. Last September, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission took federal court action against the egg producer Pirovic Enterprises for misleading and deceptive conduct over its free-range labelling. The ACCC says that judgment gave the clearest legal definition yet of what constitutes free-range farming. Justice Flick found that most hens should have access to outside areas on most ordinary days. The ACCC says it's determined to restore consumer confidence. We're conscious that nearly half the revenue from eggs comes from free-range eggs, so a lot of people buy them. They buy them with the expectation that they're getting birds who can roam outside, and so our concern was that those, adver uh, those advertisements needed to be true. Uh, if, if you don't have enough, a, a certain level of truth in advertising, then I think people lose faith in, in any advertising. So part of our role is to make sure that ads are, you know, broadly, we're not trying to be pedantic, but broadly uh, telling consumers accurate things. Rod Sims says three more cases pending against egg producers are likely to give more clarity on the definition of free range. But he says this should already be clear enough. I think farmers know how to meet it and provided they understand we're not going to be out there counting every hen, it's just a common sense view that most birds are outside on most days. I think this can be met and easily operationalised by the industry. Last year, Australia's consumer affairs ministers agreed to consider an information paper on free-range egg farming, which is now being prepared by the New South Wales Office of Fair Trade. The Australian Egg Corporation is hopeful that this document and the new ACCC cases will provide some much needed investment certainty. And in our industry, when you've got such big investments in terms of capital infrastructure, uh, we want to make sure that we're making the right decisions in terms of that investment. And we can only do that when we know what free range actually needs to be or should be. When you talk about not investing or delaying investment by a few years, three to five years or even more, that provides significant issues for the industry down the track. You know, this is an intensive agricultural industry. We're producing 13 million eggs every day. So we need to continue that pipeline of investment. And where, you get, uh, where, where that pauses or where it is stalled does not assist the industry in terms of feeding this growing population. The lucky ones live on farms like this. A layer hen farm approved by the RSPCA. When they're not eating, not drinking, not laying eggs, they're out scratching around, as you can see. The RSPCA has an approved free range accreditation scheme, but it says producers have been reluctant to sign on. There certainly is a reluctance to invest because it's clear that the market is uh, demanding more humanely farmed food, and in this case free range or cage free eggs. Um, but while ever there's a lack of definition around that term, there's going to be a reluctance to invest. So it's absolutely essential that we have a, a clearly defined, uh, legally um, based definition for the term free range. Under the RSPCA's strict animal welfare standards, hens must be free to express all of their natural behaviours. Natural behaviours are key to animal welfare according to the RSPCA, but so is enough room to range. It works on a stocking density of 1,500 hens per hectare, but says this is an area that could benefit from more research.
This is certainly an area where um, you know, the research could help in assisting us in better understanding the impact of increasing those stocking densities to say 5 or 10,000 or in some cases 20,000 birds per hectare. Um, so before changing stocking densities or before considering much higher stocking densities than, than those that are um, used currently, it's important to understand the welfare impacts on the bird. Australia's Poultry Industry Cooperative Research Centre has been looking closely at a wide variety of free-range systems since 2003. So you have, you know, from the tropics into the completely dry arid areas. You have different plant coverages, different rainfalls, different temperature profiles, and different predators and different biosecurity concerns, different environmental issues. So there are whole heaps of issues that we haven't really considered. Professor Mingan Chokt says the CRC's free range study found that only 11% of birds will go outside every day and 15% will never leave their sheds. This makes feeding much more challenging than in a caged egg farm. An enterprise ignoring 11% of their birds probably will not survive too well. But if you over-formulate for the 11% of the birds, for example, you're basically over-formulating for the 89% of the birds. Well, nobody can afford that. And feed accounts for 65% of the production cost, large production cost. Professor Chock says the poultry CRC is trying to take the emotion out of animal welfare in the egg industry. He says farmers need to be part of the debate and productivity should also be a measure of health and well-being. We judge animal happiness through our own emotive judgment. There's very little other way to do it. But I mean, it's a lot of people say, oh, OK, birds on, in a dust bath and they look happy and exhibiting their natural behaviour. And that's really, really good. But linking that with productivity has been very difficult and we haven't really done a large-scale study in that. Apart from that, it's in terms of provision of food, you know, freedom from hunger, freedom from fear, and freedom from other stress, freedom from predators. Well, the cage environment certainly provides a really good environment for the birds. You know, the best thing about this particular system is that if I need to check a bird out, I can get that bird, I can pull her out, and I can check her for um, whether she's laying, whether she's got external parasites, mite, northern fowl mite, um, lice, and, and clearly if we had lice on these birds, we'd be getting them on ourselves now. And you're not using any antibiotics? We don't have to use them at all. We haven't used antibiotics in this farm now for 30 odd years. And we used to have to use it back years ago. Um, if birds get a rep respiratory disease, it'll go right through them. So that's when you've got to use antibiotics. Bede Burke is a second generation egg farmer and industry leader, producing about 1% of the nation's eggs at his Tamworth farm. It's a fully integrated system, growing and milling feed for 100,000 laying hens. It's state of the art and fully computerised. And while he's convinced it's the best system, three years ago, B. Burke realised the market trend in Australia was moving away from this production model. Free range had grown dramatically from 5% to about 30% of, or a little bit more of the marketplace. If we were to continue long term in industry, we need to produce what the consumer is asking for. So we embarked on the journey of um, planning, uh, of putting together a business plan, business strategy, um, the funding, the modelling, the costing. We were very close. We were very close to um, embarking on that journey. Uh, we were looking at putting in about 50,000 birds in a free range system in three different age groups. The federal government and one of the country's leading poultry experts say the rush to embrace free range is putting the whole industry at risk. It follows confirmation of a second outbreak of avian flu at a chook farm near Young in the state's southwest. In October 2003, an outbreak of avian influenza in Young, New South Wales, sent shockwaves through the industry. Hundreds of thousands of birds had to be destroyed. 
Bede Burke says he wasn't prepared to risk adding free range to a system that has strictly controlled biosecurity from its rearing sheds through to the end of egg production. With an exotic disease outbreak, it, it, that sounds bad enough, but, but when you have your farm taken away from your control from the date of diagnosis through to the day that you're allowed to start restocking and rebuilding your business, we weren't prepared to put our business through that. The industry is now moving away from production models that integrate free-range and caged egg production. But the risk of avian influenza remains high. Waterfowl are the main carriers, and while the government currently shares the cost of cleaning up any infected farms, the industry is worried that the disease could be declared endemic and the emergency disease response plan would no longer apply. With avian influenza, you really can't vaccinate for it because there's so many strains. It's like the, you know, it's like what we experience with the common cold, or even with um, human influenza, the strains keep on changing. So there's no what called vaccine that's practical just to prevent the occurrence of avian influenza. That's number one. So if it was declared endemic, um, then that would be a concern because if there are outbreaks, the outbreaks wouldn't be cleaned up because there'd be no cost um, to clean them up and that consequently would mean Australia would be considered internationally as being positive AI ongoing. Peter Scott is a consultant veterinarian to some of Australia's biggest poultry producers and senior research fellow at the University of Melbourne. It's very, very important in a flock of pullets that the birds are all uniform because then if the birds are uniform, we don't tend to have competitive behavioural problems. He says the growth of free-range egg farms has seen a return of parasites and diseases which caged egg systems had under control. We don't have the tools available to Australia now to treat them. We have very limited antibiotics we can uh, use, which needs to be done for the therapeutic benefits for the health of the birds. Uh, we don't have an all-purpose wormer in this, in this country, so if the birds get internal parasites, we don't have a registered um, wormer that can be used to, that will address all those internal parasites. And the same thing applies for the external parasites. We don't have um, insecticides that we can use on birds while they're in the shed producing eggs. So there, therefore, as a consequence, when you have those conditions, you lose productivity. The reality is that demand for free-range eggs will continue to grow with Australia's big two supermarkets committed to moving away from caged egg production. Both Coles and Woolworths declined to be interviewed for this story. But the industry says the retailers need to work more closely with producers to guarantee supplying their customers. The industry needs to put up its hand and certainly get more engaged, but I'm calling on the retailers to also get more engaged with their suppliers and the industry in terms of their forward planning because to only to forward plan in the egg industry means you need to make investments, you need to make forward plan decisions. It's very hard to do that when retailers make short-term decisions for what might be a long-term outcome. And unfortunately, we can't supply if we haven't got that investment in place. What I personally have been very disappointed about in our supermarkets is that they have taken their own journey, their own decisions as to what sort of a, an egg we should be producing and they've tried to, to, to um, skew or to alter the natural investment patterning, pattern that was occurring. And also with a disregard for the fact that our industry completely replaced its cage infrastructure um, in 2008. So, so um, it's, the message has become very confusing for us. We really want to have a communication and a dialogue with them. There's no point in going out and building each other up. If they do that to us, we won't have eggs. We won't have eggs available in the quantity and the price and the variety and the choice that we currently provide our consumers with. We'll end up with a production system that is disparate, disjointed, and certainly not able to deliver in the quantities of eggs that we need to have 